county beaches become a permanent fix very early in life. They are, in fact, as close as you can come to the Southern California dream. The dreaming starts early, and why not? It's very easy for the habit to become incurable. Entire lifestyles are being centered around it. An addict, once hooked, would need a very good reason for pulling away, even temporarily. But for some kids, a curious migration begins every August, taking them to a setting as philosophically and physically far removed from this as you can get. Why do they do The answer is as much a mystery to this man, Pop Warner football coach Jim Hartshorn, as it has been to countless others. The Pop Warner program has always been such an easy vantage point from which to critically assess organized youth sports. Come on, let's go, go, go. Come on, come on. I don't know. I've asked myself that same question several times. They've, uh, why would a why would a 12 year old boy come out and uh, go through what the uh, calisthenics and the sun and the sweat and the hard work and get knocked around when he could be laying on the beach? And I don't know why they come out. The only thing I can think of is they really have an honest desire to compete in a controlled athletic situation. Hartshorn has been coaching Pop Warner football for four years in the San Diego area, a strip of growing but still low-keyed coastal towns. This year, he's handling the Seahawks, a team of 11, 12, and 13-year-olds. One of his players is Guy Monzilio, who at 13 is in his sixth season of Pop Warner football. Guy assesses his feelings for the sport this way. I like football because it's a contact sport, and um, the coaches get a chance to teach kids what they know, and some of the kids get to teach the uh, other little kids that are just joining for the first or second season what they know to help them become better football players. These two participants, one a boy with an almost unreal dedication to a sport that demands much, the other a sheriff sergeant who has dealt with kids of all kinds, are the subjects for this documentary, Hit Like a Man. Jim Hartshorn's self-appraisal has included many questions, an important one being whether coaching has been a vicarious return to childhood. No, I'm not necessarily a return to childhood, I, although you certainly get a huge thrill out of, of the kids doing well. It reflects back on the coaches, and when they do well, you feel very proud of them. It's just like your own kids. I have these, well, from the middle of September until close to the 1st of December, I'll have these boys more than their parents will, and, uh, and you, get, you get very attached to them. You tend to treat them just like your own kids. When they're good, you know they're very, very good. When they're bad, they're horrible, and, and uh, you tend to treat them that way. I'm Dave Cohen. It started here, on this field, back during the summer when Hartshorn began putting his team together. Among his team leaders was Guy Monzilio. We were with them almost from the beginning, as the pieces began to fall into place. The kids, who only a few short days before had been lulling on the beach, began to take the hard knocks necessary in putting together a football team, as boys learned to, indeed, hit like men. Three, six, six. And if this is to be achieved, then nothing is cherished more than a player's willingness to endure the pain of contact work. It's here that Guy Monzilio shines, something recognized by Hartshorn. Guy is one of those kids who is easily coachable. He responds well, he responds to discipline, he works hard. He doesn't have, he's never had super skills like some kids have. Some kids are natural, whatever it is, from the minute they set foot on the playing field. Guy's had to work at performing these skills. I think this is the fourth year he's played for me at, at, at uh, three different levels. And he has come to, as far as he has because he works at it. He works hard at it. After the first day, you know, when you, when you loosen up, your muscles are all sore and stuff, and it hurts a little. And I thought, you know, it's going to be like that all the time, all season. And I said, well, next year I'm not going to quit. But after a while, it got better, you know. So I went through the season not knowing, not knowing what I said before. Then the next season started, and it hurt again. And I said, I'm going to quit the next season. 
but it kept on going until around my third or fourth season, and I knew it, it would have hurt, but not as bad because I was used to it. You always see him at the bottom of the pile, and you're wondering if he's going to get up. And uh, and this is probably my, my chief concern. Uh, he uh, has a, a tendency for being where the ball is, and and, uh, and you do get on the bottom of the pile. Clifford Manzilio is an engineer. Guy is the third of three sons who have played Pop Warner football. For the father, the specter of possible injury is always present. Several occasions where he's gotten uh, more than just a, a little hurt. We had to take him to the hospital for some x-rays last year. And uh, luckily it was just a, a little strain, but, but uh, that's the one thing we worry about. You know, I don't like to see any kids get hurt. Football equipment improves all the time. Coaching gets better each year as the program becomes just a little more organized from season to season. Who said hit on that line? Pop up, pop up. Get him up, get him up. Don't loaf now. It's hard to imagine on, where one would find seconds, American youth seconds, more hyper-organized than here on a Pop Warner practice football field. Come on, everybody, come on. Watching this, the drills, the contact work, the exhortations That's of the ever-present coaching it. staff. Good job, Kevin. Stands around, gets clobbered. It would be natural for an observer to wonder aloud about the good old days. Those were the days when kids simply chose up sides, then went to a vacant lot okay. somewhere to do battle. Democracy in action. Dr. Tom Johnson, a child psychiatrist, thinks differently. A director of Little League Baseball and a longtime observer of youth sports, Johnson had this to say. Play too. But people tend to forget that when there was just the vacant lot and the bat and the ball, there were often kids who never were chosen, were always left out. Hartshorn has been coaching okay. for four years. You're on he readily one. admits that the game is not okay. for every youngster, that. but that despite the pain that must sometimes be endured, there are benefits to be gained. I think there are kids who need organization. And the ones that are in our program are in our program because they feel a need for, to be an organized sport. What's the best part about the game? Well, showing good sportsmanship, you know, because if you do a penalty and somebody yells at you, then it's both of their faults, you know, but if you all work together, it turns out right if you win or lose. What happens next? Does all this energy, this dedication and hard work justify itself? Is it an end in itself? Or is it only part of something bigger that the kids, perhaps even the coaches, aren't even aware of? This is the San Diego High School football field. The size and virtually everything else about it, very little from other fields. Well, the same goes for Pop Warner. We bring this up because in this instance, the similarity goes much further. Here, there has begun an attempt to bring together youth football and high school program. In effect, fitting eight and nine year olds into a system that could take them right into college. When successful, it represents the ultimate in organized youth sports. And it's nothing new. Come on, Jeffrey. Hot set. Ready. Set. And as we'll see, the struggling San Diego High School program with a new coaching staff and renewed booster support fully expects to make good use of this, a training ground for some 140 kids whose tackling and blocking take on new meaning. Got to not only that, Pete, you can't let the tackle off the ball. You can't let the tackle off the ball, Billy Beach. Sports, once organized, seem to follow a Parkinson's law all their own. An ever-expanding continuum develops. Similarities persist. Hence, football practice takes on a sameness that differs only to the degree of the player's size and skills. Here at San Diego State, one can reasonably expect to find players who have been doing all of this probably as long as 12 years. Here, skills have been honed along a road that has deviated very little. And that should come as no surprise, for it's assumed that a player is here because he wants to be. A step down is this, the high school football field. Here at San Diego High, new head coach Craig Bell brings a winning tradition from Burroughs High of Burbank. One that included two playoff bids in his two years as head coach. Stop, make the tackle, please. Now stop giving them a false sense of security and start hitting them. Run it again. 
Hoping to build a program that will be 100% his, one of Bell's first moves was to help install his system into the Pop Warner program. Just like, uh, well, for example, the English language and how we'd learn it. And that example, in the, in the going through it, you learn to speak year by year as you go through high school, 1 through 12. And by the time you're out of high school, hopefully you can converse and get along with people. You can't let the tackle off the ball, Billy Beach. You see your linebackers picking themselves up off the ground? You don't go through high school and every year take a different language. English one year, French the next, German the next, back to English, and so on. So if a boy would start eight or nine years old with the same football organization and the football philosophy and go from 10 through 16 or 17 with the same philosophy, it only, only figures that uh, that person would be far more efficient than what he's doing. Bell feels it will be two to three years before any payoff begins. If successful, the dividends can be high indeed. I think the prime example would be Temple City High School in the Los Angeles area, and they represent the longest winning streak in the state, and I think the second longest winning streak in the entire nation. And they've had a very stringent and very efficiently run Pop Warner program, which is a, just a, a direct carryover into the high school. It's run by the high school coaches. The high school coaches sit on the board of directors, and they control everything, and this has helped produce oh, untold CIF championships for the high school, and also, as I say, a string of, I think, 48 wins in a row at one time. dream of a possible dynasty was hardly a consideration before the Seahawks' only preseason scrimmage. What happened now against San Marcos would go far in how Hartshorn assessed his team. For Guy Manzilio, it was final tune-up before his sixth opening game a week away. You guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? That's right. Okay. You can call his heads. And heads it is. It's really interesting to see the way the boys develop. They, they always start out, the first year is always rough for them, and they always are a little hesitant, and then you can just see them gain confidence, and the team seems to grow together, and, and they gain confidence in what their abilities are, what they can do. And uh, of course, it's a, if they learn to do the job right, they're going to win, and as they win, they become even more confident. And, I just like the kids. They're just fun. They're really fun to play with. No declining. No, no. We know. Refuse, refuse, refuse. We find the boys that come out for football tend to want to be involved in and want to respond. It's it's not a sport where you can stand back on the sidelines and take a look at it. Nice try anyway. Mr. Hartshorn's a really good coach because he makes all the players play in each game, even if they're not good at it. He puts them in to play a lot, because last game, everybody played a lot. And I think that's good, because everybody gets a chance, and if they make a good hit or tackle, then they can go home and say, Mom, I made a good tackle today. And then that encourages them to go on. Did something like that happen with you that encouraged you to go on? Yeah, my third year, the coach put me in as a linebacker, and I made six tackles. And I heard my name with a loudspeaker, so I decided it was fun. Easy victory for the Seahawks. Spirits were high. It looked like a successful season ahead. I firmly believe that if the boys are taught the right fundamentals and taught how to do it right, that they will naturally win because if you do anything right, you're going to be successful at it. Uh, so winning is a natural offshoot of doing things right. And if you don't do things right, you're not going to win and you have to go back and start over again and teach them how it's supposed to be done. Tomorrow, we'll hear how coaches assess what goes into making a successful player and a winning team.